On the 7th of March 2000, the Kanunga people woke up to a very strong smell of human flesh burning. And they came out of their houses and they saw a huge inferno in a place that used to be the ch a church. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, um, my name is Mary Lane. This is a part of my true crime series that I put out regularly on my channel. Now, this story is pretty much wild. Um, I don't know why I didn't come across this story until now. Now, this story took place in the western district of Uganda. It's called Kanunga. Now, Kanunga is a place where it's more or less like a rural place where a lot of people are not educated, a lot of people are, you know, into farming and, you know, just outskirts of the Uganda main city there was this movement that was formed by four key people which I am going to talk about them um, as we go on in into the story. On the 7th of March 2000 the Kanunga people woke up to a very strong smell of human flesh burning and they came out of their houses and they saw a huge inferno in a place that used to be the ch a church. Now the name of the church is called the Movement for the Restoration of the Ten Commandments of God. Now this church is said to be an offshoot of the Catholic Church. Most of them, you know, practice Catholicism. Um, however, they focus on, you know, the Marian apparition where they are said to, you know, get words from Mary, the Virgin Mary and yeah who intercedes for them and conveys messages um, through people now mary conveys these kinds of messages through key people in the church uh, which we are going to talk about you know as we delve into the story deeper now this church was run by four people which two people being the key players now we'll talk about the key players before we go into the story proper. Now the first person we are going to talk about is Joseph Kibwetere. Now Joseph, um, little is known about the age and background of Joseph. However, he's from the Catholic Church and he was considered rich in Uganda standard in that he became a politician and he acquired land to the extent that he gave land uh, to um, an orphanage for building of a school. So he was quite prominent and he was so religious that he said that he could hear the Virgin Mary talk to him. Now this did not sit well with a lot of the Catholic priests so he left the Catholic Church and went to found his own. Now he founded the church with a lady called Credona Nweringde. She owned a bar business where she made banana beer and she was also working as a sex worker. Now Credonia um, came from a wealthy home in the sense that her father had a vast amount of estates in the rural area where she was from and she's also and the father is also said to be very very religious so she came from a very staunch catholic background now the father has always been involved in um in the doings of the catholic church and he, he even formed himself a a small group of which credona was part of so when joseph came to her and told her about all the things he's been seeing and how the Virgin Mary has authorized him to start a church. She, she bought into it because, of course, they are both from the same background. So she bought into it and they founded this church. And uh, when they founded the church, the father of Predona was the head of the church until he died. And Joseph assumed the head of the church. But it was said that Credona was like the leader of the church. Now, there were rules and regulations in the church. This is how the church ran. The church ran on strict no sin rule, like no one is supposed to sin. Um, if you sin, they have a way of knowing and they punish you. Now such punishment includes saying the rosaries a thousand times. Um, there was rumors that if you're, it depends on the sin you commit, depends on the gravity of sin you commit. If it's, your sin is too much, you are sometimes killed. And the church also believed in sacrifices of children because um, Why coming the property of the church after the inferno, they found children strangled in the church and they found something that looks like a, they found a pattern that looks like a ritual process. So the church had a lot of things going on on the ground. Now, let's talk about 
two other people that are key to this matter. Now let's talk about Ursula Komenhangi. Ursula Komenhangi, I hope I'm not butchering these names. I'm not Ugandan, so and the name might come off a little bit strange. Please forgive me. Now Ursula is was said to be the sidekick of Credona. Ursula and nine other people known as the apostates in the church were the people who actually did the dirty work. They were, they, they were the one who carried out the punishments and they were also the people who heard from the Virgin Mary. So they were the key players of the church. Litu is actually known about Ursula's involvement, but she was actually very, very involved. Another key person is Dominic Kataribabo. Now, Dominic Kataribabo is the surprising character in all these events because every other person seemed like they were cuckoo, really. Um, Credona, Ursula, and even Joseph himself, because Joseph was said to have suffered from bipolar and, you know, he was seen in the psychiatric hospital. But yeah, but the, the person who, whose involvement was quite surprising was Dominic. Now, Dominic um, was a PhD holder in theology studies, and he actually studied in the US. But he said they, they said he had picked up a cult-like mentality from the US when he came back. When he came back to Uganda, he became a, um, a rector in a seminary, so he was deep into the church. But he came back um, with a difference, you know. He came back with a cult like mentality, and there was rumor going on that he was part of a religious cult in the USA, a religious cult who believed that the world was going to end in the year 2000, in the millennial. So these were the key people in the church. Now, what does the church do? How does the church operate? Well, the church is a very self sustainable church. The church had farmland. Remember, this church was built in Credona's father's huge estate. So they had farmlands. The people made clothes as well. They had a school, and people were, you know, getting educated in the school. So it was more or less like a wholesome, self-sustainable church. So it naturally gathered a lot of followers. Um, they were up to like five thousand to six thousand followers there in Uganda. So it was a big deal. Now, a woman's account, Miss Atahiro, she said that um, she joined the church when she was 10 and it was a church who uh, practically sustained her until she got married. And when she got married, she left um, the church and joined her family church. She gave insights to the happenings of the church and she said that she was the one who said that if you sinned, uh, you were going to recite a thousand rosaries and people who commit grievances were also would just disappear from the church and people would stay silent about it no one says anything about it so that was it so that was her account of the church now what led to this massacre okay let's go into the story proper now the the, the leaders of the church um convinced the people to sell their properties um that the world was going to end at the dawn of the millennia you know to year 2000 so a lot of the members sold off all they had including Joseph Joseph sold his huge property uh, that he got when he came back from America I sold it to his nephew believing that the Lord would come in the year 2000 and take all of them so there was no need for the possessions he had so but what the people did was after they sold off all their properties they gave it to the church um, because the church convinced them that, that what they had came from God and it had to go to God. So the church was given all that. Now, year 2000 came and the war didn't end. Everyone started becoming really, really suspicious and people started dropping out of the faith like flies and people were also demanding for their properties. Now, it was said that during that time where there was upheaval, everyone was like leaving the church, um, the death started occurring more frequently. The death started from people who had, who sold huge properties and gave it to the church. Um, some people, a lot of men were killed, a lot of men went missing, um, a lot of women also went missing. But if you had, if you come to the church and demand for your money, um, after some time, you just no one hears about you and it seemed to be like a common occurrence in the church i don't really know why those people didn't speak out but you know there's something about a cult i've never been in a cult but 
I've watched documentary series about people in cults and you know this oath of silence people in a church normally take you know and you know the the, the, the number of brainwashing going on I also read that the people of the church were basically mute they were basically silent and they could only speak through writing that, that, that was wild when I read that if you wanted to talk to the leader of the church if you wanted to talk to Credona you would write your statement in the paper and you pass it to her and she you know conveys a message through inanimate objects she conveys messages through telephones to cups through plates it was wild it was wild so they taught the people to be silent that if you were silent you were less likely to sin because the tongue it starts from the tongue once you start talking a lot um your hands your eyes your mind everything follows so you have to follow a ritual of silence and that was what the church members did so that silence trickled down from you know sin to like everything everything else because you don't talk about the church you don't talk about the activities of the church i would also used punishment and flogging um for disobedience so it just just a whole lot of things now it was said that the people became you know aggrieved and became doubtful and people were dropping and demanded for their things and so on and so forth now there are two accounts because we really never know what happened in that church for real we really never know what happened in their church because a lot of people alive i don't want to say killed on youtube because demonetization issues but a lot of people were unalived and people gave different accounts but, but there are two scenarios that stood stood out as theorized by the police the police is said that because the properties the people the leaders of the church these four leaders um, joseph predona dominic and ursula um, had collected people's properties so in order to silence them they were able to convince them to come into the church and they burnt the people alive and set the church on fire that was the first theory the second theory was mass 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 suicide that the people were convinced that on the 17th of march that god was finally going to come so it was said that the church members were buying coca-cola and a lot of beef and they were jubilating that they were finally going to go to heaven they were finally going to be taken by god that the world was actually finally going to end so they bought these things and they came to the church and it was blessed by the four people by joseph by dominic by ursula by credonia now the blessings was poison because dominic was spotted dominic that's the catholic priest was spotted the day before buying 40 liters of sulfuric acid and petrol so this was premeditated so it was said that these people were poisoned um some were strangled but the fire had destroyed everything so there was little or no evidence but the police concluded that it was either a mass suicide or a mass murder they are leaning towards a mass murder because of information they got as the years went by. Remember this happened in the year 2000, it's more than 20 years now, and they have started gathering new evidences. So the evidences they have is that they have spotted some of these leaders. They, have, they said, some people said they've spotted Joseph, that they spotted him in a psychiatric home in Uganda. And some people said Credonia, they spotted her somewhere in Zimbabwe, but the truth is no one has been held responsible for the crimes. Now, the most baffling thing of it is that around the areas of the church, even in Joseph's house, even in Credonia's backyard, um, there were number, there were grave, mass graves of strangled people, especially children. Um, there was one woman who had 10 children and all her children were strangled to death. There was one woman also who had 11 kids they were all strangled to death so they recovered a lot of bodies of men of women and children in shallow mass graves 
so there is a lot of things going on in the church now my speculation is that my own conclusion based on what I've read is that church was run by mad people people who believed in Marian apparition people who were schizophrenic to the extent that they heard word from veg words from Virgin Mary and they thought it was legit words I think these people were schizophrenic and they managed because they were charismatic and educated um, Joseph was ran for a political office Dominic a PhD holder that was you know excommunicated from the Catholic Church he was um, a defrocked priest and the church also guarded nuns that were you know ex nuns from the Catholic Church so the church from the outside looked very credible which brought in the people and you know they also had a figurehead Joseph was the figurehead so he naturally you know he naturally made public relations look good but on the ground Credonia was said to be you know mad and and she was the one running things and coupled with all the drugs because I heard these people also did drugs these drugs help enhance their vision and their hearing you know of the Virgin Mary they are hearing to the words of the Virgin Mary so I think that these people were drug filled coupled with del with religious delusions that they led people to, to death and people are um, you know brainwashing is a very powerful tool they brainwash people they beat these people down brainwash them to collecting their properties and also surrendering their life for me i believe that these people were actually murdered because amongst the dead bodies the four leaders were not found even though joseph's wife claimed that he was among the people that you know was born to life but the police never found the four leaders they never found the body of Ursula they never found the body of Credonia nor the body of Dominic you know they never found those bodies so which led the police to conclude that this was a mass mother and the people who committed this committed this mother are at large and they may be alive you know surprisingly they may be alive and no one has been held accountable for this mass mother it's very sad for the people of Uganda until today um, a lot of people say they still smell that smell of a burning of burning human flesh I mean it's a lot of people who died over 775 people were burnt in that house that day I wish I could you know I wish this story could um, go to any member of that church because there were 5,000 to 6,000 people so I am sure somebody if you come across this video please I need to hear more of the story I need to hear more of what happened if those people have been caught and and after the church saga what else did the community do how did the community move on these are the things I would really love to learn I really love to hear so if you're Ugandan and you have more information please do not fail to reach me um, I have my email down below now thank you so much for watching if you're a returning subscriber so much for sticking by me and if you're a new subscriber welcome thank you so much for clicking on this video I'll see you guys when I post Bye.